In this video, I'll introduce you to Tukey's Honest Significant Difference Test. I'll show you how to calculate Tukey's HSD, and we'll also go over a correction if you have unequal sample sizes. So the Tukey HSD test is the Honest Significant Difference. It's a post-hoc test for differences in means between groups. While an ANOVA can tell you if your results are significant overall, it won't tell you which pairs of means are different. After you've run an ANOVA and found significant results, in other words, at least one mean is different from the others, then you run Tukey's test. Tukey's test will compare all possible pairs of means. So here's our ANOVA output. We have a significant difference at the 5% alpha level. Our p-value is 0 0.039, which gives us a significant result. So here's the formula to find the Tukey critical value. The first thing we want to do is find that Q. First note the number of treatments. We have three treatments, A, B, and C. The second piece of information we need is the degrees of freedom within groups, that's 12. Now I'm using Excel for this output, and in Excel this row is the error term. If you're using a different type of software, like SPSS or JMP, you might see something a bit more explicit that it's the error term. For example, this SPSS output clearly labels the error, but in Excel you want to look at the within groups row. You could get the degrees of freedom another way by counting up all the items in your sample, that's 15, and subtracting the number of groups, that's 3. So if we take a look at our table, we have k equals 3, with 12 degrees of freedom, our Q value is 3.77. The next piece of information we need is mean square. Again, that's for the error term, or in Excel, within groups. Our ANOVA output tells us that the mean squared error is 15.9. N is the number of items in one group, that's 5. When I work this out on a calculator, I get 6.72, and that's our Tukey critical value. So we have our critical value, now we want some data to compare it to. We're going to calculate the absolute differences in means and compare those to our critical value. So I've made a table. In the first column I have all my possible pairs. I have pair A versus pair B, A and C. And finally, I'm going to compare B and C. I calculated my critical value as 6.72, so I can fill that column in. Next, I want to find the absolute differences in each pair of means. To do that, subtract your two sample means and find the absolute value. Now we can compare our differences to the critical value. If the difference is larger than the critical value, we can reject the null hypothesis that the means are equal. The first pair, A and B, has an absolute difference of 7.0. This is greater than the critical value, so we can reject the null hypothesis. In other words, our result is significant at an alpha level of 5%. The last two pairs have differences that are smaller than the critical value, so those means are not significant. The result from the Tukey test tells us that pair A and B are significantly different. That procedure assumes that you have an equal number of items in every sample. If you have unequal sample sizes, it gets a little more complicated. If you have different sample sizes, you're going to want to replace that n in the denominator with n sub i and n sub j. i and j are the two samples that you're comparing means for. There's a couple of ways to do this. The easier of the two approaches is probably the Tukey Kramer approach. It assumes the populations have equal variances. You can continue to use mean squared area as the variance estimate. And the formula looks a little different. You'll want to carry out separate error term calculations for each pair of samples. This can involve quite a few additional calculations, so I'm not going to do that in this video. It is what David Howe, formerly of the University of Vermont, calls a pain in the neck. 
You don't really have a choice though if you want to compare differences in means. Most of the tests are going to require you to use a similar formula to calculate these differences. As a final step, you calculate Q and evaluate that against the Q table. And here's the formula for that. It's for this reason that many people will say to not run the Tookie test if you have unequal sample sizes. Your best bet is to use software. That way you can avoid a myriad of tedious calculations. If you found the video helpful, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.